Now I've been asked to look at the hats that were at the coronation and how they were actually made, which I thought would make a nice video. I'm not just going to be showing them, I'm talking about who made them, if I can find the details out, and how they were made. So we're going to make a start and the first one we're going to look at is Princess Eugenie's. Now I don't know who made this, I have tried to find out. But what it is, is it's a lovely sort of button pillbox shape, probably covered in the same fabric as her jacket. And it's been wrapped around with crin very nicely. It's not a major extravagant hat, but it looks very simple. And I'm assuming, looking at it, that it was probably held on with hat elastic and hair grips. So that's the first one. Now, halos were incredibly popular, as you can see with Penny Morden and um, Kate's mum. Now, they look absolutely stunning. Now, I have done plenty of videos on making halos. And if you go to the description in, of this video, I will be putting links to all the videos that might be helpful for you if you're looking to recreate any of the styles um, that we're looking at. So Penny Mordance was a halo covered in the same gorgeous fabric as her dress and then decorated with this heavy gold leaf work. I'm assuming it's what would be called a bullion work, so it's probably metallic threads um, embroidered and then attached to the outfit and to the hat but very sleek looking. Now, a lot of hat makers do hat blocks like this. I'm just showing Highland hat blocks here, but virtually all of the hat, make, the hat block makers make halos. And again, if you're looking for um, any of that, if you look in the description of the video, I will be talking about all the um, places you can get the stuff and who makes what and what videos are useful for you in this process but i have to say they're lovely carol middleton's halo was made by jane taylor and it's been wrapped and pleated in the same fabric as her outfit and then just accented with some gorgeous little blue faux flowers on the side look like little forget-me-nots and really really very pretty and very elegant so that was Carol's by Jane Taylor. Now, Pippa Middleton's hat was also by Jane Taylor, and everyone loved this. A large saucer, it looks to be in cinema straw, and I would say this has been hand-shaped onto a crown block, and it's been accented with pleated crin underneath to cause a real whoosh of softness to um, offset the hard fabric. Now, Catherine, Princess of Wales, and her daughter wore headpieces by Jess Collett. Now, these are gorgeous, and it's all embroidered and bullion work. So it's silver threads, um, beads, all hand done. I mean, it must have took a long time but so pretty and just not like a tiara, just something new and fresh. Now the Crown Princess Mary of Denmark wore a bandeau style, so like a very wide headband. The same fabric as her outfit, pleated, and then she's got a short um, veil to the nose that matches the colours. Again, very elegant. And a bandeau or wide headband looks great with your hair up in a chignon or if you've got long hair, they really look good. Princess Beatrice also went for a bandeau style by Emily London. And the fabric on this has been beautifully pleated and stitched. Again, a lot of work has gone into that fabric before it's been covered onto the bandeau. And they pretty much stay in place. They don't need any other fixing if they've been made properly, wired or with a headband inside. Now, Queen Letizia of Spain, her hat was by Balal. Very large dome shape. Also, what almost what you might call a Dior shape. 
Now, if you look at the right-hand picture, you'll see underneath there is a small percher, a small button that's been blocked first, and then the large dome shape has been added over the top. Because obviously with that large dome shape, it wouldn't sit on the head. It'd wobble about all over the place. Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, her headpiece was by Jane Taylor and the leaves were made by Svetlana of Perfect Present Perfect Creations, who is a contributor to this channel. And again, very elegant, simple, but beautifully made. And that is all mounted onto um, a headband, I believe. Could have been a clip. Now, Lady Louise Windsor, again, this is a two-part hat. Now, it's in a lovely window pane cinema for the brim. And the brim is what we would call um, an invisible, a brimless hat or an invisible edge to it. It has been done and then mounted onto, again, another piece of the hat underneath. So like a skull cap type underneath and then it, the window cinema has been mounted onto the top. And again, I, sh I do have uh, videos on how to make invisible edges. Katy Perry, I'm not sure I've said hat unknown, but I think it was a Philip Treacy. And hers is chiffon. It's all chiffon with wire to keep it in place and then topped with netting and more chiffon and crin. Now, she was told off a bit for the size of her hat, but I think it's very pretty. Queen Matilda's hat, again, is a blocked shape. Zara Tyndall and Princess Charlene both wore what I would call classic blocked perches. Uh, these have been blocked on a head block and they've been covered in the fabric. I like Zara's because those are ostrich feathers made into a plume and trimmed. Look really, really nice. Not so keen on Prince, Princess Charlene's because I think it was too small. There were lots of other hats that I'm not going to talk about. And of course, the lovely Anne wore a beautiful bicorn with a feather. And also, of course, you can't forget the crowns. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks a lot. Bye.